This is an introduction to Lego Robotics by Felix and Annie, Team 52286 Tornadoes. And we have our outline here. So first we talk about this first robotics and specifically get into first Lego League. And we talk about the robot and the innovation project and the core values. We have the competition, and then we have acknowledgements and other extra information. And at the end, we will have Q&A. And it says, ask a question at the link, which I think is posted in the chat. So, we are a diverse team from four different schools, three cities, and an equal number of boys and girls. We depend on each other to get the job done. Angelina is the sharing leader. Aspen is the presentation leader. Bruno is the mechanical leader. Stephanie is the solution leader. Our moms and dads are our drivers and ATMs. My name is Felix. I go to Faria Elementary in Cupertino. I like programming, physics, and art. I started teaching other kids scratch programming when I was seven and was elected as the programming leader of our team by a majority of votes. Hi, my name is Annie. I am a fourth grader at St. Andrew's Episcopal School at Saratoga. I like reading, horseback riding, and art. I am elected as the research leader of our team, and I am the technician of our robot second attachment. Stephanie and I accomplished all the missions of our second run. So I'm going to have a poll for all of you for which age you are in. So let's see here. Six people said they were in preschool and below. Four people were in kindergarten. Six people were in first grade. Most of the people were in second, third, and fourth grade. Four people were in fifth grade. Five people were in sixth grade. One person was in seventh grade, and no people were eighth grade and above. So let's see. What is FIRST? FIRST is an acronym for for inspiration and recognition of science and technology, founded by inventor Dean Kamen in 1989. It features robotic competitions for all grades. Nearly 680 students from over 110 countries participate each year. FLL is the simplest robotic level in FIRST, which we are in this year. In FLL, kids of four to six age in FLL Discover, kids of four to six age use Legos and Duplos to build creative projects. In FLL Explorer, kids of six to 10 years of age start to explore motors, sensors, are, and are introduced to basic programming skills. When they reach nine years old, FLL Challenge vastly expands to the functionality and offer real competitions. Field is a table of four to eight feet and your team can have three to 10 members. We are only allowed to use stock Lego parts with no modifications. For those who really enjoy FLL but are bothered by four times eight feet table and Lego parts only, you can start First Tech Challenge, FTC, as soon as you enter seventh grade. FTC team build their robots using any parts and can buy or machine or 3D print, as long as it is not larger than an 18 inch cube. The field is 12 by 12 feet. If 12 feet is not enough for you, you have to wait until high school. First Robotics Challenge, FRC, allows you to build bigger robots as long as it weighs less than 120 pounds and the field is 27 times 54 feet. This is bigger than two thirds of a tennis court. The robots are big and fast. A new documentary is coming to Disney about first, and I am going to show you the trailer. I was at the club fair. There was this huge pile of metal. 
it was a robot, and I was hooked. We created FIRST to inspire kids to be a microcosm of the real world of engineering. FIRST doesn't tell kids what to do or show them how to do it. They have to figure it out. You don't know what your passion is until you try new things. There's a bunch of different elements. We're having some issues with the battery wire. It's a little daunting. Six weeks is barely enough time to build a robot. I hope we will have enough time to finish, but who knows? When we started this with 20 some odd teams, now we have thousands and thousands all around the world. First has given me the opportunity to become better and better and to never stop dreaming. It is way more than a club. It teaches you the skills of life. It's technology, respect, teamwork. It is more than robots. So, FLL Junior or FLL Explorer start with simple sets of bricks and gears. They use Wido 2.0 the old version, or Spike Essential, the new version. They have a very small hub with only two ports, one small motor, and a few sensors. The programming interface is Scratch JR. My very talented brother, Neil, shown here at six years old, together with his buddy, Austin, has created numerous, very clever machines with such limited resources. Here, they use the set of gears to reduce the speed of the motor and increase the force to become incredibly powerful. They lifted a big robot with their tiny motor. On the left, Niels has a robot that can climb over a book. It was powered by an innovative worm gear. So you can climb over a whole dictionary. On the right, the, the, the robot can detect the edge of the table using the distance sensor and stop the car near the cliff and never fall off. Now for boys and girls older than nine years old, we can do something more challenging. Okay, so, Poles. Mm, the second poll about Legos. So which type of Lego are your family most familiar with? So Duplos, four times the size of normal Legos, 15 people chose it, which is about a quarter and 47 people, which is the majority, chose Lego bricks. 18% chose Lego technique. 7% chose we do. It looks like not a lot of people, like no people chose Spike Essential. EV3 was chosen by four people. Robot Inventor, two people. Spike Pine is three people. And other robotics, there's also three people. So we are going to talk about Spike Prime today. So the red and blue bricks are the most common form of Lego bricks people are familiar with, but they are not very good for building complicated robots. We built robots using studless Legos because they don't have studs, the little bump on the top of the Lego brick. They have holes instead of dots and are more stable. If you are familiar with Lego technique, you know what I am talking about. Motors and sensors are the robot's electrical parts. Motors come in two sizes, large and medium. They can turn and spin gears or wheels. Color sensors can see the color, RGB, brightness, and reflected light. 
The hub is the brain with six ports to connect parts of your toys. It also includes a three-axis gyroscope for tilts and a three-axis accelerometer for acceleration. There are also ultrasonic sensors for distance and touch sensors for force, but we did not have enough ports to use these sensors and thus do not know much about them. This slide was written by our mechanical leader, Bruno. So as soon as we start with FLL, we started to build our robot's driver base. This is like the car thing you saw, and it is the foundation of all missions. We built it like a person with two large motors as legs, connecting wheels, with two medium motors as arms, to do different missions later, with two color sensors as eyes to see the road. To come out with the best design, six of us split into three pairs and built three base robots. We tested and reviewed each of the robots for a week and then made a final one that combines all the good features. The final robot base is compact, robust, well-balanced, and versatile. Two color sensors in front are protected by a light shield. We use knob gear so that our attachment can easily go on and off. Later, we also add counterweights to the back of the robot to balance out the weight of the attachment in the front. And you may wonder, what is an attachment? So since our robot needs to complete a variety of missions during the competition, 18 for this season. A fixed robot can't do that. We solved this problem by building several attachments which can be installed and exchanged easily during the competition. This picture shows a clever attachment built by our presentation leader, Aspen. We use the single attachment to deliver two cargo, unload the ship and complete accident avoidance mission. We actually built several versions of our attachment for this mission, but irritating through design testing improvement. That is all I am going to talk about mechanics today, and we are going to switch gears to programming. I'm the programming leader of the team, but it doesn't mean I wrote all the code. I'm only called in to help if another hit a roadblock or needs a vice. Actually, everyone in our team is a good programmer. Before moving forward, I would like to know how the programming background of the audience. Would you please complete this poll? About a quarter of the people chose Scratch JR, a half chose Scratch, Almost a quarter chose Python, and 18% chose Java. Only a few people have done PHP. Eight people have done C or C++. A few people have done MATLAB, and about a quarter did not, about a quarter did not do do any of the above, so they chose the other. Okay. Here's the results. Okay, so Spike is a software that allows us to code and connect to the hub. It supports three programming languages, Scratch JR with horizontal blocks and icons only. You don't need to type anything to use it. Although it may look simple, if you use it cleverly, you, it can do a lot. My brother is very good at it. I've seen him building complicated games and even multi-threading using message broadcasting. Bigger kids prefer Scratch. It, it is vertical word blocks. It gives us more freedom and control. We can also define variables and functions with Scratch. We use Spike Prime, the advanced version, instead of Spike Essential with smaller electric parts. And there is also Python, which you have to type. These are examples of the functions or my blocks we wrote to be shared by uh, several parts of our codes.
And finally, if you are a very good programming programmer, use the Power Python to write more concise and maintainable code. It is a lot easier to debug than Scratch. In order to allow your robot to move, check out the movement blocks shown in pink. They allow your robot to move in any direction. To see, check out the four, first four blocks of the sensor shown in cyan. And here we see color sensors allowing us to see and motors allowing us to run. To follow a line, a white, black, white pattern. You can turn either way depending on if your reflected light intensity is higher or lower. This type is easy, but not very reliable and efficient. So if we are in the middle of the black, as in this case, we want to move this way. The right wheel moves faster, so it turns left. Now, as in this case here, it's too white. So, so the left wheel is faster and the robot turns right. To follow a line more efficiently, you could somehow maintain a certain RLI and adjust if it is off. In this proportional line follower, the robot adjusts according to the current RLI. There is a more advanced PID line follower, but we haven't made one yet, so we don't have any code to show. Here's a video of a line follower. Okay, so Annie, can you do this slide? There are three important parts for the competition, including the robot, the innovation project, and the core values. These three parts are all scored equally, so it's important to do well on all of them. Next page. The first part is the robot. For the robot part, on the tournament day, the team has three tries for the robot, and only the best one counts. Each try is two minutes and 30 seconds. Next page. This is the 2021 tournament robot mission table. This year's theme is Cargo Connect. There are 18 missions, and the sum of all the completed missions will be the robot's score. Each year has a different theme, different mission table, and different robot missions. Besides the real-time on-site runs, teams also need to present how the robot is designed and programmed. This is the recorded presentation we used on the judging Hi. session. We are Team 5Q286 Tornadoes. We are a rookie team and we are all third and fourth. For the robot, we split into three pairs and built three base robots. Each base robot contains two large motors, two medium motors, and two color sensors. We made a final one that combines all the good features of each robot. The final base robot is compact and has two color sensors in front with the light shield. We use dog gear so our attachments can easily go on and off. Later, we also add a counterweight to the back of the robot to balance out the weight of the attachments in front. We created several my blocks that will be useful during the competition season. Yaw angle turning. For this function, the robot uses the gyro sensor to turn to a target angle using the original starting position at home base as a reference point. The robot turns clockwise or counterclockwise depending on whether the current angle is greater or less than the target angle. Stop that line. We used RLI to measure the line's white, black, white pattern. Follow line. We built a proportional line follower to follow the edge of the white, black, white line. The robot is able to follow either edge of the black line using either of its color sensors. KP is the scaling factor that determines how smoothly or how sensitive the robot is to turns. Gyro straight. 
This function allows us to go straight while we are moving long distances. You can follow the angle provided by the gyro sensor. It also enables us to turn and keep moving at the same time. We also created variations of these my blocks by adding conditionals. For example, follow a line until the other eye sees an intersecting line. We are doing a total of 16 missions for a maximum possible 445 points. We split the mission into three runs based on their geographic location. This table shows all the missions we're doing and the points. For round one, the robot runs along the south wall and completes eight missions. Platooning trucks, home delivery, large delivery, innovation project model, cargo connect bridges, and unused capacity for a total of 160 points. Equipment inspection bonus gives a bonus point of 20, making the score 180. In our code, a robot moves backward to align itself with the south wall. It moves forward and turns east facing the bridge. The robot moves forward, latching both platoon trucks to the bridge. It backs up and turns, moving backward and aligning itself with the south wall. It moves north a bit, then goes east, stopping at the sorting center. The robot turns facing north, then backs up into the south wall. It adjusts the home delivery mission and moves north. It stops at the cargo connect circle and drops the cargo with the innovation product inside it. Then, it does the bridge using a series of back and forth movements. Finally, it pushes the blue container into home. For round two, we are doing engine switch. On my cargo plane, cargo connect, and the plane for transportation journey. The robot initiates at the wall facing north. It goes forward and stops at the line. The robot follows the line until it sees the corner. It goes forward a little bit more to go to the engine switch and flips the engine. It then moves backwards until the right eye sees the line. It then turns to face the cargo plane. It then turns to face the cargo plane. It goes forward and the right arm brings down the cargo. Then the arm moves back up and moves backward. It turns on and faces the transportation journey plane and the arm hooks up in the plane. It moves the plane out and goes back to the home base of the plane. For run three, we're doing load cargo, unload cargo ship, airdrop, and accident avoidance for a total of 150 points. With six more precision tokens, making the score 200. The robot starts off against the south wall. It goes forward and then turns diagonally to follow the line, counting the number of intersecting lines. It stops in front of the cargo ship and turns north, and then goes forward and loads the cargoes onto the ship's west deck. Then it turns toward the crane next to the cargo ship and uses the attachment to push the crane east. After that, it follows the rest of the line and counts one intersecting line so it can push the airdrop and finally does mostly reversing movement to go to accident avoidance. Our old attachment didn't control a platooning truck that well, but our new attachment lifts it up slightly so that it is easier to control. We used the attachment so we didn't need to make a robot face the doorstep or maneuver through tight spaces. We dropped the cargo with the innovation project model and pushed it forward so that it is fully in the circle. For these missions, we use the same attachment in the home delivery mission to save time and use the robot to push the container into home. We initially did the cargo plane first, followed by the engine switch, but later realized that it's actually easier to do the engine switch as the first mission. The same huh? attachment is used for the cargo plane and transportation journey. For the cargo plane, our attachment is not able to completely push down the lever. We later changed the shape of the attachment so that it can press down completely. Our old attachment for the mission was a forklift that will lift the cargo and set it down, but then discovered that the cargo doesn't balance easily or falls or stays on the attachment when the robot leaves. Our new attachment, however, makes balancing easier as two holders on axles that hold the cargo. When it pushes against the ship's deck, the front holder gets pushed to the back and the cargo rests on the ship's deck instead. This was one of the hardest missions in Run 3. At first, we decided to use a passive attachment on the side and a gyro straight function. We found out that the passive attachment wouldn't apply enough force anyway, so we decided to crash it head on with the stick, which would then move forward and push the cargo all the way out east. For the last two missions, we passively pushed both of them for a total of 50 points. Thanks for listening. The second part of the competition is the innovation project. In this part, the team will take a problem related to the competition theme, study and research the problem, and propose solutions. During the judging session, the whole team will present study results and problem solutions to the judges. After the presentation, the judges will ask questions and give scores based on the presentation and the team's performance. Here's the project video. The problem that we are trying to solve for this season is the truck driver shortage. We chose our project idea with each team member 
researching problems in cargo transportation, and we came up with two different ideas. We presented our ideas to each other, explaining why the problem was important, and voted on the project we would work on. We decided on the truck driver shortage. The truck driver shortage is a big problem right now. The reason why it takes so much time for an item to be delivered is that we are missing so many truck drivers. If you look at the graph in the slide, you can see that the truck driver shortage has been rising higher and higher over these past years. In 2026, we estimate that around 180,000 truck drivers are needed. Truck driver shortage is a big problem. Truck drivers are needed to deliver cargo. It is the last step of cargo delivery. 72.5% of all cargo in the U.S. is transported by the trucking industry. When there aren't enough truck drivers, to, it causes delays for more customers. It also affects consumer prices by increasing supplier costs which then increases consumer price. It leads to the congestion of ports because there aren't enough truck drivers to remove the cargo. This mind map shows the relations between all the reasons of the truck driver shortage. Different colors also represent different things, such as red being COVID, blue being retirement, and so on. COVID was one of the major reasons of the truck driver shortage. Some truckers got scared or sick and driving schools closed. With an average age of 49 years old, most truck drivers are already near retirement. And with the onset of COVID, many of them choose to retire early. Long truck driving can also be lonely. There is a low pay as drivers are paid by distance, not time. So if there was heavy traffic or a pop tire, you still get paid the same. For all these reasons, there is a severe 90% turnover rate, which means nine out of 10 people are leaving the job or retiring. Each of us came up with some solution ideas. We presented our ideas and narrowed them down to six solutions and then voted. Then we got two results from trucking as a career and importing drivers from Mexico. To research solutions, we wrote a letter to ATA and OOIDA. We interviewed someone from the autonomous cars industry to find out more about using autonomous trucks as a potential solution. We learned that autonomous trucks are already being made, but they won't be ready for the road for another two to three years, so it wasn't a feasible solution for us to help with. We did a lot of internet research and brainstorming and other things instead. To decide between two solutions for modern trucking as a career and important drivers from Mexico, we did further research on the pros and cons of each one. We decided to focus our work on promoting trucking high schools as Mexico is also having severe truck driver shortage, and also it won't be easy to get the, to get visas for them in truck in a timely manner. The government just passed a Drive Safe Act in November 21, which creates a program that allows drivers under 21 to drive trucks between states. The law met, allows many more potential long distance drivers, but we need to get people interested in trucking. Nextgen is a company whose goal is to promote trucking as a positive career field. Patterson High School trains truck drivers. Next year, Patterson High School are working, are working together. We can help increase awareness of the trucking problem, help promote trucking as a career, and suggest partnering with more high schools. We made accounts on Twitter, Reddit, and Instagram to share our knowledge with other people. Here are the sources of information we use. Thank you. Thanks for listening. The third important part of the competition is the core values. The core values are also very important. For example, if the robot has a very high score, but, core, but the core values are poor, that team may not move on. They describe our way of working together as a team which is characterized by respectful cooperation. The way we solve problems and work together describes our core values. During the tournament and judging session, Judges observe our core values. Next page. All FLL teams, coaches, mentors, and organizers know the core values and act accordingly to them. They describe our way of working together. For discovery, we learn new skills like problem solving. For innovation, we use creativity and persistence to solve problems. For impact, we applied what we learned to improve our world. We achieved this by sharing our solutions on social media. For inclusion, we learned to respect each other and embrace our differences. For teamwork, we learned that we are stronger together 
were stronger when we worked together. We always vote fairly for a task assignment. We help each other when someone gets stuck. For fun, we enjoy and celebrate what we do. We designed our team logo and team jersey together. So here are acknowledgements. Miss Shannon is instrumental to our success. She is extremely experienced, passionate, and patient with kids. We enjoy every class with her for the past few months. If you need help, her website and email are listed at the top of the slide. Art of Physics Education provides us with the Zoom meeting account and recordings. AOP teaches middle school students AP level physics. The mechanics and optics knowledge are needed to bring the robot to the next level. Last but not least, we couldn't have gone this far without the unconditional love and support from our families. They're our drivers and ATNs. Hi, good job, Felix. And good job, Annie. And hi, uh, this is a uh, Shu Feng. I'm Felix's dad. And uh, I think uh, the case did a fantastic job. And we didn't plan to give uh, this talk until very late uh, Tuesday night. Uh, literally, uh, they have only two evenings for preparation. And in between, they have after schools, Chinese classes, piano lessons, maybe Russian math. Yeah, the kids did a meeting though with this short notice. I still remember uh, just a few months ago. Uh, can you go to the next slide, Felix? Yeah, so this is the, a few months ago when Annie and Felix just met. You now, Annie was a little girl and a little bit shy, and he's not comfortable with the ball, it seems. And Felix, he's just finishing his second grade, and he's a little bit nerdy, and he pays more attention to the robots and codes than the pretty girl just uh, right beside him. Just a few months has passed. Now, what see what they can do? They could build fantastic robots and world good programming, and they rank very high in the competition in San Francisco, and they rank higher than many of the middle school teams. Just what I feel is just like a movie set. It's more than just robots. They have teamwork, core values, innovation. So, in my opinion, STEM is only a small fraction of what they have learned through this experience. The discovery, innovation, impact, teamwork, inclusion, all the lifelong lessons they have learned. They will, this will influence them for years in the future. They are, and they are really having fun. I will show a few photos we took during the past few months. Look at that. Look at the energy. Everybody wants to take the questions because they really they are really excited about what they do. Next one. Yeah, so those are some of the uh, class sessions. On the top left, left, we have some high schoolers coming in to help them to demonstrate how they collaborate, how they do the homework, so we can learn from them. And on the right hand side, you see uh, our kids get into the front of the classroom and using whiteboard. Here, I think they are planning their missions. They have 16 missions. They need to choose what to do and what to skip. So each person have their pick. Then we do the, their do arrangement and do the voting. Finally, they came with a team decision. Next slide, Felix. Ah, so this is the fun part. Right, so we have this called core value activities, and uh, on the bottom right, they are pretending to be an animal. The whole team is an animal. I think here they are doing a bee, and it was uh, the one on the back with a sting. On the bottom left, you can see they are so happy when they have first finished their uh, base job, which is a very important part uh, for the competition, and. If you want to get started to experience something like this, uh, 
it will be fantastic. So people will ask, uh, some, many people come to this uh, presentation, want to learn how you can get started. The next slide, I will share some information. And the first, about the financials. So for the case with six to eight years old, you can start with just what Felix Brother does with the Spike Junior, we call the Spike Essential. It costs about $275. It can be shared about two kids. So it has one small uh, harp, one motor, a few sensors, but you can do a lot. For the challenge part, which uh, our Tornado team, Felix and Annie is in, and the hardware is the Spike Prime. It's about $360 right now when I checked. And we have one of them for every two kids. So they can work in pairs. So that's why you see three robots there. So we have three sets uh, for the six kids. And unfortunately, this Spike Prime only came with one large motor. So the robot only had one wheel to turn. So we also bought so-called expansion set of the Spike Prime. It cost $110. And it gives us more motors, more sensors, a lot of more spare parts. If we want to do the competition, you see we have a table, which is four by eight. And I don't know where we can buy the table, but our uh, parent coach, uh, Aspen's dad built it for us. And you can ask your dad for that. Just a few trips to the Home Depot and uh, you can do it. So of course, you need a classroom. The classroom needs to be big enough to hold everybody, hold the table, and a few additional desks for uh, other things. For example, you can do, uh, uh, they will uh, need to do the, the homework. They need to, uh, uh, you need to prepare other things. So eventually you might want to go to a competition. The registration about $225 last year uh, for the FIL. And then I'll need to buy, what do you see those mission tables, those parts, the Lego parts? They cost a digital $75. And that's the one you pay to the, the national wide international organization. And the competition we want was hosted by the Northern California FIL. We pay them $300 so they can you know, set up everything, rent a, place, uh, rent a place. So those are the financials. Next slide. And those are the timelines. So for typically, uh, the registration open in May, mid May, then then in August, the session will launch. They will say what is the theme. Last year, the session uh, the theme was the Cargo Connect, as they talk about. Then the then uh, after that, you can work on your missions. The competition will be in November to June. So that's the timeline. So you, if you want to get started, you get. A, should start it before, uh, uh, around sometime around the summer, before September. Uh, next one, Felix. Yeah, so about the team. And we have an amazing team of six very dedicated and very talented kids. And But how can you join the team? I would tell you, I think join the team sometime is very difficult. Because the optimal team size is, is six, uh, if most team may, they may not want to take additional one because they don't want to uh, get their team diluted, and uh, most team will keep up to six because a smaller team each kid will be overloaded. So the also the team our team needs twice a week. We have two hours for instructions and two more hours for practice each week. So they need to get together a, a lot of more. During the competition season, actually for the last two weeks, we almost meet, I mean, not everybody go there, but we have technician go there almost every day to do a practice. So in the final 2.5 minutes, you can do a good job. So my recommendation is you team up with your neighbors so you can see each other and do the practice anytime you want. So that's, uh, that's my best, uh, uh, suggestion for how to form a team. I think maybe uh, later on, we have today, we have like 150 people registered. 
I can send everybody an email. Maybe I can start a WeChat group or uh, maybe Google group or something like that. So people in here can team up. Majority of our audiences today came from the South Bay, like Cupertino. Although we have a few from Washington, Chicago, Alaska, but the majority of people are from Cupertino. So you can team up very easily. And for the success, parent participation are essential. These kids are young, right? So the third graders and fourth graders, they sometimes, they have troubles, right? So I don't remember how many times, I think Felix, the team, uh, the Felix ads mean they're doing run three to load the cargo. They probably failed hundreds of times. Every time you load the cargo to the bubbling uh, dock, they fall off. So they may cry. So the parents need to be there, give their support and enc encouragement. Of course, we need to drive them around and help them with the schedule and other logistics stuff. And for the innovation project, and which uh, because of the time we did not play the full video and we need to do the field trips and interviews. Those things the kids cannot do themselves. They may give a suggestion. They said, maybe I want to meet Mr. XYZ. Z, it's us who need to reach out and to arrange these interviews and the field trips. So our support is very important. And we have in our six family, we have 12 amazing parents. Uh, for their, uh, they are very passionate and dedicated. And sometimes they also they need help occasionally with the programming and all the mechanical part. So if we don't know, maybe we can reach out to our friend for help. And many people say, I don't have, I know nothing at all, right? So how do I start? And one option you may hire, you may want to hire a professional coach. Like we, we have Shannon, she's fantastic. She helped us all, uh, for the next uh, last few months. And she knows she's very experienced. And I'm sure there's a lot of other coach also can do this. But uh, just keep in mind, if you use a professional coach, uh, the coach uh, fee will be your biggest budget of the team. Yeah, because there's somebody coming in every week. Uh, Next slide, Felix, Felix. Yeah, I think I would end uh, my part of the presentation with this slide. So uh, in last week, at uh, this time, our team got together. We got to know the team tornado. Uh, we advanced to the Northern California Championship. Uh, it's very good and everybody was happy. But look at the picture on the right. So we work a lot at night. So, so just like Michael Forbes said, it's what you do in the dark that puts you in the light. Thank you, everybody. I think uh, now we can take questions. You can put a question in the, in the link uh, above. I also put it in the chat. And uh, then we can present your questions so that the case can answer. Oh, I can also answer if the question. I think we uh, saw it in the chat. It was too early. Yeah. You can send it again. It was too early in the chat. Okay. So I also, right now, I also allow everybody to unmute themselves. Thank you, everybody, for keeping quiet. Any questions? You can also unmute yourself and ask now. Oh, I see you meet twice a week. Um, how long do you meet every time? Uh, the two hours and two hours is for um, every uh, every time you meet for four hours. Any or Felix, can you answer this? Uh, so for class, we meet for usually two hours and we go to Angelina's garage every week to work on a robot. Felix, so can you present the questions? We, we have a question from this person. K 
Can you please share a few tips on the innovation project? So early in the season, when the theme was announced, which was Cargo Connect, we had to come up with the problem associated with the theme. So, and we had the problem, we did a lot of research on it, and like every, everyone has to come up with a few problems. And then after we do enough research on the problem, everyone has to come up with a few solutions. So, so and then we had two solutions and we chose one of them to be the final solution and the other one to be the, the other one to be the alternative. So we have another question. So where is the place? So we, we meet at one of our teammates' house, which is Angelina's house. And also, do we you, use a 3D printer? Can you give no, uh, the question to Annie, Felix? Can you uh, let Annie to answer for you? Uh, we don't use the 3D printer. We use the kit and we build it. We don't use the 3D printer. How long have the kids been coding? So maybe Annie been can answer. From... Annie, can you answer? Wow, for me, I've I I've never really done coding, but I think for some of the other teammates, they've done a little more. What if no people are near to help? I, create, uh, I can answer this if you guys don't know the answer. So um, if you buy this Spike Prime kit, and there's already a lot of tutorial inside of software. They teach you how to build the robot. They teach you how to do coding. And like even that the line follower Felix showed in the beginning, the simple line follower, it was an example in the official, uh, came with the, the kit you, you, you get. And also there's a lot of online resources. For example, there's something called a prime license. Those kids, they built this uh, website when they were young, just like uh, Felix and Annie. Right now, they already went to MIT. They still maintain this website. It's a fantastic resource. You can find them on YouTube. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a lot of videos. You just search FL competition or line follower or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's a lot of information on the internet. I can answer this question. So what programming language do we use? We use Scratch or in Spike, they call it word blocks. Maybe you can talk about a little bit about Scratch. So Scratch, it has these blocks that stack on top of each other. Some like those events, you cannot stack things on top of them. And there is a stopping block and you can't stack anything under. And there are also C-shaped blocks where you stack things inside of it. Yeah, and you do not have to buy anything to use a Scratch. Scratch is developed by MIT, uh, MIT. So you can just directly go to scratch.mit.edu. You can start to learning Scratch programming. The only part they do differently, their Scratch has an API to talk to the robot. If you do it online on MIT, you can do the calculations, the loops, the logics, everything. You can do animation, but you do not control the robot. So I think kids should go to the website to learn the scratch before they start the, the robot. Uh, so, Annie, go ahead. So, 
the answer to the question, what if there are parts that you don't have? Well, for example, when we first bought the kit, it only came with one large motor. So we had to buy the expansion kit. Did you go through FLL Junior first, or did you start with FTC directly? Can you share what FLL Junior might be like? So the answer is actually we did not do any of those. But we do FLL Challenge. And FTC is for middle school, so we can't do it yet. FLL Junior, you use like, like we explained about stunless Legos in FLL Junior, you don't use anything. You most of your things are has stuffs on them. Do you name any of your robots? Well, we 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 I don't think we did. And Tornadoes. You can do the next, hmm? Tornadoes, right? So. That's not the name of the robot. So, Annie, you can do the next section. What? What's the subject that is taught in the class by coach? So, the coach really, she can teach us things from like how to build the robot to like what ways to like how to make the slides better she like teaches anything that we need to know for the competition how do you make the robot go perfectly straight without making it turn a lot so do you mean in the line follower or any code? You can you can answer both. In the line follower, if you want it smooth, you need just the right KP, our scaling factor. I think I'm I will go to the previous slides. We can now see a slide. Yeah, we now we can see. It. Wait, where is it? So you see here we have a parameter called KP. If you set it at just the right amount, the robot, it doesn't go perfectly straight, but it's straight enough. And if, if you don't want to follow a line, just go straight. There's this block called start moving straight. Maybe you can talk about uh, the gyro, gyroscope, right? That's how oh, yes, there is gyro straight. You can get to your gyro straight start, yeah. So you see down here, I might need to zoom in. It doesn't let me zoom in. So yeah. anyway, this is a gyro straight function. Um, we did talk about the gyro sensor a little bit, so it follows the gyro angle. And if it is off, you can move forward, but usually it's less off than the line follower because lines can turn and the gyro position is always the same thing. Yeah, I think another has passed, and but right now there's a few more questions. I think people who need to leave can there's leave. A lot we will, more questions. Yeah, we will just keep answering the questions and until uh, you know if for the people who are interested to stay. And thank you for those uh, for coming. So, Faith, you can go ahead. And you can do this one. Did you meet any professional Lego builders? If so, what were their names? Uh, so we did. So in one of our classes, some high schoolers did actually come to Angelina's garage and help. From her. FRC. Uh, for a C and I can't remember their names. I think the quick server, team quick server. Yeah. So what is the next 
competition you are going to. It is NorCal Championship. So I think in the first round there was, let's see, um, there were about 200 people. And then in, in the second round, there will only be 80 people competing for the championship. And then asking about the kit. So um, this is the kit. And I think you can buy it on the website. This one. Uh, I think the adult can answer this one. Yeah. So uh, at first, you need to have a team, right? So uh, actually, Felix, one of the Felix best friend, and uh, she just started the online lesson and with a coach. But the kids do not meet. And each of them can only build their own robots. Then they cannot do the missions. They cannot do the collaboration, right? So robots is only a small part. And you need to find a few people who are interested and form a team. And you can either, then you can learn either online with a, a class uh, online yourself with some parent coach, or if you want, you can, yeah, you can pay for the professional coach. And, but the team is very important. Without a team, you won't go very far. What coach do you recommend? Uh, this is a tough question because we never had any other coach, right? So we just had one coach and you are welcome to research yourself. Uh, who is the coach for your weekly two hour class? And you can have this one. Well, our coach is Miss Shannon and like said in the slide, she is very nice and patient. Other sets? So there, for FLL challenge, there is EV3, I think that's the only other set. And there's also a different software for EV3. We never used it before. We don't know where you get it. Yeah, EV3 is already nine year old. It's probably as old as Felix. So uh, I think the spike is the only thing we will get for this level uh, between nine years old and 14 years old. How did we get our kit? Don't. Yeah, so uh, you, Spike Prime is uh, directly available from the LEGO official website. It's a little bit slow to ship. And uh, I think you can also get them from Amazon, but uh, a little bit more expensive. How do we get the accuracy correct? So accuracy, so reliability maybe? So I think we tried multiple codes and we observed the robot carefully. And there was one of the times when the robot was following the line and when it's on an intersecting line, it would jerk. So that's sort of the part where we observe the robot very closely. Yeah, for example, when the robot from one end of the table goes to the other end, how do you make sure it goes straight? And how do you make sure it stop at the right location? You can use lines or reference points. So let me show the table. So there are lines, there are lines everywhere, right? And 
there are intersecting lines. Sometimes it would jerk there, but like, yeah. And you could either follow a line or stop at a line. So, and then let's see this one. Can you recommend any robot classes or camps in Cupertino for elementary students? Uh, sorry, I can't because we have our own team and we never been to other robotic class or camps, so we cannot make a recommendation without first-hand experience. Thank you. Is there a prize for the NorCal Championship? Uh, I think that will be a trophy. And uh, the most importantly is the joy of being recognized and all the hard work pays off. I think uh, I, uh, there's a, a short video when our kids learned when they curled in front of the computer and to hear announcement because it was announced online and they were so excited. I think the journey is the world. Right? So we don't really need the price. How do we find a group of kids that like robots? Is there a WeChat group, please? I will create one and I will email everybody who uh, registered to this conference, this meeting. Thank you. Where did you find your coach? Is it a website? Can you answer? So our coach, Shannon, does have his website. So let me find the slide. So it is dralowacademy.org and her email is dr.owl.academy at gmail.com. So what app is needed to get the kit? Shani, uh, Annie, can you answer? Uh, I actually don't know about this question because... What's, what she... app are you using to run the robot code? Oh, uh, we're using Spike, but I, 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 I don't know where to, where to get the kit. I mean, the, the software came uh, freely. You can download software today, even without the hardware. Okay, so you just go to Lego Education, you can download the, uh, the Spike Prime and you can play with it. Just uh, when you run, it doesn't have a robot to, to move or to sense and to make sound or light. How many rounds are there? So there was a NorCal and then there was like four places our place was san francisco so i think it was santa clara san jose san francisco and sacramento and then the next round is norcal championship and then it's the u.s and the rest i don't know is there anything kids can learn on themselves before they can find teammates uh, we, we did mention the core values, so they have to learn the I core think on values. the, the Lego le part, you also can, can do, you can do a lot on yourself, but, uh, uh, but not in a competition level. Right, so you can build a robot themselves. I do have a friend and uh, yeah, the, they are in the audience. They are calling from Alaska and they were hard to find the teammate there and uh, it's a remote place, but uh, they, they just uh, do this themselves. How do you register? Uh, you register derived from uh, FLL. You search first Lego League, it will come up with the links to register. And uh, then you register for Northern California FFL. Then they, they have a terrible website, but you, if you try hard enough, you will get in like uh, we, we almost uh, did not get in this year because there's only 48 teams for the for each competition, for each site. 
but uh, we managed to do it. What is your favorite robot that you made? Well, I don't think we have a favorite, but we have a final version. It looks like this. I think I also made my own final version. I don't have it right now. It, it looked quite different from this robot. So, how do you get Spike? For iPads, you can download it on the App Store. And for computers, you can like... Website. Yeah, website. So I, I think we are done. Uh, that's a one question. Name the robot your brother built. So wait, where is it? I saw the last two questions. There's a new question are coming up. Yeah. yeah I don't so, see it anymore. Yeah, I can see. It. So the the robot and the kit used by uh, uh, his brother is called a Weidu, but Weidu is already uh, discontinued. You can buy so-called Spike in Central. It's a junior version of Spike Prime with a smart hub, and it's very easy to get the little kids get started. The software will be the same. What skill kids needed to have other than interest in robots to form the team? Uh, I think the kids will be able to read and write and to communicate with others. Then everything else they can learn in the team and they grow really fast. Uh, Any? Next question, do you use iPad or MacBook? Uh, most of us use a computer because, well, it's just easier and you actually have a mouse, but you can use iPad, but it's just a little harder in my opinion. Yeah, I think we have uh, gone through all the questions, but the country about the reshuffled uh, because the people upvote uh, a few questions. Is there any question we did not answer? I think you can uh, just uh, unmute yourself and uh, to ask. Yeah. If no, I think How thank you very much. You... Uh, go ahead. How long do you take to build a, a robot? Uh, Felix or, or Annie? Do you want to take a quick this question, Felix or Annie? So um, we used one day to build the robot and a week of inspection and combined all the good features. Any more questions? If no, I think thank you very much.